Hi guys, it's Tamara. I'm back with another video today. We are going to talk a little bit about unavailable parents. Okay, we're gonna t we're gonna make this a little bit more um, narrow and focus on emotionally unavailable and unstable parents. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel for those who are subscribed and for those who are not subscribed, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button over here so that way you can stick around with us, talk about these topics, suggest topics, ask questions, and engage in conversation. We've been talking a lot about relationships this month already. We are in the first week or the second week of talking about this and we're going to continue this until the end of April. But in this video, we're going to focus and narrow our focus down to emotionally unavailable parents. There's a lot of them. And um, I've seen a lot of emotionally uh, unavailable parents in my career over time. So I wanna point out some common characteristics. The benefits for you in today's video is that you're gonna learn about common characteristics of emotionally unavailable parents. And I'm gonna highlight some of their common behaviors and attitudes. And the next week, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this um, and narrow it to narcissistic and sociopathic parents and what that looks like, okay? So let's go ahead and just jump on in, all right? So the first sign of an emotionally unavailable parent is an inability to give, right? Most parents do not want to um, hold back anything from their kids, right? They want to continue to love their kids, to nurture their kids, and to give them what they need, right? What kind of a parent would withhold anything from their child, knowing that it's going to emotionally destabilize them, frighten them, or create some kind of long-term psychological problems? Unfortunately, unavailable parents, emotionally and psychologically, they, you know, they don't know that they're harming their kid most of the time. Um, these kind of parents tend to be very permissive, meaning that, you know, they kind of let the wind blow below them wherever it will. They don't have any boundaries, no structure, no regulations, right? There's no high expectations that the child has to meet or work toward, right? It's just kind of like, you know, this attitude of, you know, I had you, so what? I'm not going to adjust anything in my life, right? Okay, so the first is just kind of, you know, a parent who refuses to give up uh, any of themselves, right? Uh, to anything, their em their emotions, their psychological stability, their knowledge, their you know um, understanding of life around them. They're not willing uh, to give that information to their child to help them grow, right? So the first thing is that parents could care less, right? These kind of parents really don't care. The second thing is a preoccupation with outside things. We'll call it external things, right? So relationships with other people, um, having friends, um, going to parties, inviting people over, right? Putting their best forward, uh, their, I'm sorry, their best foot forward in social situations, but then going home and being a completely different person, right? It's kind of this narcissistic attitude of we're going to put our best foot forward, but we're certainly not going to be lovey-dovey, okay? Um, these kind of parents are really concerned about how they're coming across in the community. They could really care less about what their child really knows about them, all right? The next one is kind of um, having this conflicting home and social persona. And what I mean by that is, you know, you know, we all have a home personality, a family personality, and then a professional social personality, right? My professional and personal um, personality are very different, right? My, my social uh, persona is, you know, open and engaging and wanting to give you knowledge and educating you and, and just having a little bit more structure and, and being um, professional and caring. Whereas my my personal persona tends to be a little bit more affectionate. I tend to be a little bit more passionate and emotional. Um, I also tend to have down days where I'm just not feeling it for the day, right? So that's my personal side versus my social side, and we all have them. Well, an emotionally, emotionally unavailable parent um, really you know, their personas conflict and they conflict in such a way that it keeps the child feeling invalidated. It keeps the child um, feeling very detached emotionally from the parent, not really being aware 
of of you know who they're talking to or dealing with from one moment to the next it's a very scary roller coaster ride um the next thing would be uh parents who are missing in action at school functions and activities most kids can you know play basketball or do a play or some kind of theater and look in the audience and see you know mom and dad sitting over there Children who have emotionally unavailable parents can't do that, right? They look in the audience and there's an empty seat. There's nobody there to hold their hand, to applaud them, to encourage them, to guide them, to tell them that they are proud of them, right? There's none of that. And and if you've experienced um, any emotionally unavailable parent, uh, you will know that that's how they are. They're constantly MIA, okay? Uh, the next thing would be prevention of your growth. And what I mean by that is that they don't teach you how to drive on time. They don't teach you how to get a job. They don't teach you that mental health and emotional health is important. They don't make therapy available for you. They don't take you to your doctor's appointments, right? There's a lot of neglect here with these kind of parents. Um, one of the things I've noticed is sometimes it's intentional, sometimes it's unintentional, right? Sometimes it's intentional that they don't want their kids to grow up and develop a, a mature persona, um, attitude and disposition because that means they're going to be challenged. The other side of that is there are some parents who are just well, um, you know, they're well aware of the fact that they need to teach their kids how to be, but they're not ready or they don't know how to be themselves. So it ends up becoming a neglect kind of a situation. Okay, I had a client one time uh, years ago when I first started and her mother refused to drive her uh, to the doctor so that she could get birth control. Um, she also refused to teach her how to drive and she refused to take her to a therapist for counseling. So this poor young lady was just kind of stuck figuring out which way to go in her life. But I also had a very different case where the parent was so depressed and mentally disturbed that they didn't realize that they were neglecting their child. So it could be either or. Okay, the next one is unnecessary criticism um, and kind of pointing out things to you that you really don't need to be concerned about. Uh, there are some parents who will do that because that's how they were raised. There are some parents who will do that because they are emotionally and psychologically abusive. They say whatever they can. Uh, they don't have a filter. They are not structured. They're not respectful. Uh, they say whatever comes to their mind. And if it crushes you, oh well, right? The next thing is an unhealthy association to a negative or unhealthy parent. I have seen some families uh, over the years, various families over the years, come into my office and during family sessions, they'll say something like, you know what, you're just like Johnny. Johnny never made anything of himself. Johnny never went anywhere in this life and you're going to be just like him, right? So that's associating the kid negatively with somebody else who didn't do very well in life. Um, that is very emotionally and psychologically abusive because what it does is it takes your identity in your mind and it puts your mind and your identity in a context that it doesn't belong in. So then you begin to not only see yourself negatively, but also your associations. And that can lead to low self-esteem and low uh, learned helplessness, excuse me. It can also lead to depression and anxiety and, and identity confusion, you know, um, feeling estranged and withdrawn from the family, uh, feeling abandoned and un unloved and unwanted. So it opens up a whole can of worms for you. Uh, the next one is a permissive parent, and that's the kind of parent that has you, uh, clothes you, feeds you, but then totally lets you go after that. Like they don't care to sit and have a conversation with you. They don't care to call your school and report bullying. They don't care to hold your hand through this life. All they want to do is clothe you and feed you because that's what they have to do. And then they're done, right? That's the end of their job right there. A lack of self-respect. A parent who doesn't know how to respect themselves does not know how to respect their children most of the time, right? If they bring men into the home or women into the home, if there's prostitution going Going on and drugs going on and other things going on that should not be uh, they're okay with that because they have no self-respect and parents who are neglectful emotionally unavailable and does not have the skills that they need to raise a child will most likely disrespect the child and then the child begins to feel unloved and neglected and the last thing that a lot of people tend to miss and it can be very confusing because we all tend to see parents as positive figures in a child's life but that is grooming. Grooming is a term that's mainly used in sexually maladaptive cases, right? Cases where there's sexual abuse or where there's something like that going on. Uh, but for the most part, um, grooming really does refer to somebody kind of, 
you know, pulling you in with gifts and rewards so that they can manipulate you in some fashion. Um, but it's mainly used, again, in sexual assault cases, but we can use it here as well, that there are some parents who will buy your love and then hurt you. They, they, they don't have good intentions, right? Their intention is to manipulate you and to get you going on this road of, maybe they do love me uh so then that way they can pull you in and ultimately destroy you let me know what you guys think about this topic if you've had an experience with parents like this um, i encourage you to post it in the comment section below not in the description box in the comment section uh below let me know what your experience has been um how has this affected you you know um do you find yourself really being unable to forgive this parent and to love them all right guys so i'm gonna post some links in the description box below a link to a previous article that i wrote on this topic and a couple of other resources that may be helpful to you all right guys i'll see you pretty soon